Welcome to Retail Ops. My name is Quan, and today I'll be walking you through the process of setting up inventory for automated dropship and JIT fulfillment within Retail Ops. All right, now let's hop into Retail Ops to see how all this works. First, we need to configure the vendor settings to enable fulfillment of external inventory. In your left-hand navigation menu, you go to Administration and then click on Vendors. We're going to select the vendor Creative Cloth. Uh, under the Contacts pane, sometimes it's a little bit hard to see. Uh, there's another pane, the Vendor Settings pane. Let's go ahead and expand that. Now, there are a lot of options on here uh, to automate your dropship and JIT workflows, but for now, we're just going to stick to some of the basics. First things first, you'll want to check two boxes. For dropship, uh, those will be Enable Dropship and Auto Submit Dropship POs. For JIT, those will be JIT Enable and JIT Auto Submit POs. Now the auto submit checkbox, that, that's not necessarily required. That's optional. Uh, if you'd like retail ops to automatically send the P, submit the POs to the vendor, you'll want to check that. But if you prefer a more manual workflow process, if you prefer to review all POs before submitting them, then you can uncheck this box and then the POs that get generated, those will just stay in your queue until you manually submit them. Now, check those two boxes. Those are very highly recommended, both of those. Now, if you move down to the email transmission section, you'll see that Creative Cloth POs, all of those are, uh, are to be sent to ChristyK at creativecloth.com. This email is actually stored in the contacts pane. Uh, let's go ahead and switch to that really quickly. It's right here above the vendor settings pane. Select Christy King. Now you can see the email uh, stored for her is ChristyK at creativecloth.com. And uh, the, this box is checked to email purchase orders. So basically any contact that you store for Creative Cloth that has an email address and, uh, and this box is checked for that contact, they will receive the POs that are, submi uh, that are submitted. And you can add additional recipients if you'd like. It's completely up to you. You can change the, addre the from address, delivered from address if you'd like. Uh, that's also an option. Now let's go ahead and move on down to the next section, Vendor Compliance Enforcement. This affects all POs. If you check the Enforce Cancel Date box, when the PO reaches the cancel date, uh, Retail Ops will automatically cancel the PO and detach any associated order items. Uh, Retail Ops will also send an email to your vendor using the same emails as the email transmission section, of course, coming from the contacts uh, pane. It'll send a notification to the vendor of uh, that this PO will be canceled. You can also set uh, have a warning sent to the vendor if you uh, if you look at. The setting here, warn within days, it's currently set to seven. That means seven days before the cancel date for the PO, and a warning email will be sent to Christy K Creative Cloth uh, notifying her that uh, there are just seven days left to fulfill the PO. Uh, this is just a little helpful reminder for your vendor. And then, just like the email transmission, you can uh, you can add additional recipients, and modify the, the delivered from address. And now let's move on to the last section, the automatic PO transmission schedule. By default, if this schedule is blank, an API call sends any POs in ready status out to respective vendors every 10 minutes or so. However, you can modify the schedule to each vendor's preference. So say if... Um, if the person who primarily works with these POs for the vendor, if Christy K, if she prefers to only receive them Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to maybe align with her schedule a little bit better, then you, then you can do that. So for, this, uh, for these POs, these will be sent every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6.30. Uh, note that this is in military time. So if you wanted to say, say, 1.30 in the afternoon, you would not put 1.30, but you'd actually go up to 13. So 13.30 is 1.30 p.m. Now, let's check this out in action. Uh, first, we need to add external inventory to an item in our inventory. Uh, let's go ahead and open up 
the product family for SKU 1484. I've already taken the liberty of opening that up here. Now click on the button that says external inventory. Now I've already added units for this item, but just know that you'll need to update what we call the inventory advice uh, in this window. This lets retail ops know how many units you've res uh, you have reserved by your vendor for these items. So you'll, uh, you'll see that this item has, uh, Creative Cloth has reserved 24 units for us and they will cost $24 per unit. Now let's open up an order, or let's open up order 15. As you can see, I've taken the liberty of adding SKU 1484 to this order, just, just one unit of it, but this order is still incomplete. Now let's push this order. This is pushing it through our order screener. So you see the event log there. And then you see that it just passed our order screen. After the order passes through the order screen, uh, through the order screening process, it'll be attached to a PO, which you can click on directly in the event log. So you see here, this, uh, this has been attached to purchase order J2. You can click right on there. And here's the PO J2 generated just for this order. Uh, in the event log, you can see the customer orders attached. So here's order 15 right here. This is all automatically generated and it will be submitted once the PO reaches its submit date, which is determined by the PO transmission schedule um, that we mentioned in the vendor settings. So here, this is going out on 6.22 at 1.30. If you, uh, 6.22, that's next, this, that's this coming Monday. If you go back to the vendor screen here, you'll see that, yes, Monday at 1.30, Wednesday at 1.30, Friday at 1.30, yep. That's it. You've now set up a vendor for dropship or JIT fulfillment, enabled those fulfillment options for a specific SKU, and verified the automated order process within RetailOps.